Hey, it's Coach Reese. Today, we're going to write equations of ellipses, okay? Not as bad as you might think, but let's review some things we've learned about ellipses, all right? So here are your equations. Now, we know that the a squared and b squared can move. a squared is always the biggest number. If the biggest number is underneath the x, we're going to stretch horizontally. That's where our... our major axis will be, or the endpoints of our major axis will be, or our vertices. It's all the same thing. If, you're, if your a squared is underneath the y, we're going to stretch vertically, okay? And we're going to find our a value, which is help us to find our vertices or the endpoints of our major axis. The b will be the location of the co-vertices or the endpoints of the minor axis. These are things we've already talked about. Okay, now when we're going to write an equation, what do we need? We need to find the center, we need to find the A value, we need to find the B value. Because look, we're going to plug the center in, in the numerator, we have the A value and the B value, we just square them, we have an equation. But if we are missing the A value or the B value, we will be given the location of the foci or the C value so we can calculate the missing value. And this is the equation, this is the equation we will use to find the missing value. Okay? Let's go to a certain problem. Okay? Let's go to number one. So they're going to give us the vertices and the co-vertices. The vertices, the vertices are the endpoint of the major axis. So it's going to give us the A value. Anytime you see the word vertices, I need you to think about A. That's the A value. Anytime you see the phrase or the, the word co-vertices, you need to think about the B value. Okay? That's going to help you when we write our equation. Now look at your ordered pairs. What number is staying the same? So we're going to find the center. And we're going to say, on our center, the ones are staying the same. Look at your co-vertices. Your y values are staying the same. So this is how you're going to determine the location of your center. Got it? That way we can substitute it in. When you write your equation, you're going to write it just like we did with the circle. You're going to go opposite, opposite. So in this case, you're going to say x minus 1 parentheses squared plus y plus 2 parentheses squared equals 1. What we need to do is we need to figure out what goes in the denominator. So the a value. A value is going to be over here. This is our A value, because that's where the vertices are. Look and see which number is changing. This number is changing. That means since the Y value is changing, the A will be underneath the Y squared. Okay? Catch your breath. Look to see on your vertices, that's your A value. If the y's are changing, because the x's are staying the same, if the y's are changing, your a value, your a squared, will be underneath the y. Now, how do you determine your a value? Your a value will be the distance. This is going to be, the a is going to be the distance from the center to one of your vertices. So look at your center. You're at 1, negative 2. You have to determine how far it is from 10 to negative 2 or from negative 14 to negative 2. You need to find that distance. And remember, we subtract to find our distance. And we go big number minus little number. So in this case, we could say 10 minus a negative 2. And that would turn into addition. And if you say that, my, my distance from here to here is going to equal 12. That is your A value. 
The distance from the center to a vertex is 12, but we want a squared. So a squared, in this case, a squared is going to be 144. Now, your co-vertices will find your B value. So you look over here and you say, wait, my X values are changing. My X values are changing. That's where my B is going to go underneath my X. And we need to find the distance from the center to a co-vertex. So we need to find the distance from, let's go over here and write 1, comma, negative 2. We need to find out how far this is from the 7 or how far it's from negative 5. Well, you can do this in your head, but the distance from 7 to 1 is 6. So my B value, my B value equals 6. B squared will be 36. And there's your equation for your ellipse. Okay? Now, it seems kind of busy, seems kind of complicated. It'll get easier the more we do. Let's go to another problem. Okay? Now, remember what I said. The vertices are going to give us our A value. The co-vertices are going to give us our B value. Okay? Some people panic and they go, oh no, there's radicals in the problem. Whenever a radical shows up in your problem, that's a good thing. That makes your problem so much easier. Because the radical portion is the value of that letter. In this case, A equals, in this case, this is your A value. A equals 3 square roots of 15. That tells you how far you've traveled from the center to get to your vertex or the end point of your major axis. This is the distance you travel to make your make it all the way to your vertex, okay? So, you have already know your A value, all right? But you're gonna say, if you take that away, what's left is the center. So when a radical shows up, you just cover up the radical portion, and what is left is the center of your ellipse. So my center, my center will be located at four, negative 9. It's that simple. Okay? So we start our equation. We say x minus 4 squared plus y plus 9 squared equals 1. Okay? So we know that the vertices will take us to our a value. It'll tell you where the a goes. We're making a change. We're adding and subtracting to the y value. So my a will be underneath my y value. Now this is a, but we over here, we want a squared. So we need to square this or we're going to multiply it times itself. And when we do this, we're going to say that 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 15 times the square root of 15 will give us 15. And when you multiply that together, that's going to equal 135. That is A squared. Okay? Over here, we have a radical. Like I said, if you covered up the radical portion, you would look, you're looking at the center. 4, negative 9. But this radical portion, this is my B value. And that we're making a change. We're changing, we're adding and subtracting to the X value. So your co or your B should be underneath your X. Okay? So we're still going to square this. We're going to multiply it times 2 square roots of 10 because we want B squared here. We're going to say that 2 times 2 is 4. 
the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is the 10. And when we multiply, that's going to give us 40. So my b squared goes there. And there's my equation for my ellipse. Okay? So I'm telling you right now, it may look scary, but when the radicals show up, that is a good thing. It makes your problem so much easier. It helps you find the center, and it helps you find your A or your B value. All right, let's try another problem. Okay, now they did not give us the vertex. They didn't give us the vertices. We do know that the co-vertices are going to give us our B value. The foci are going to give us the C value. So now that we do not have our A value, we're going to end up using this equation. Remember what we have, A squared minus B squared equals C squared. We didn't get, we didn't get the vertices, we didn't get the A value, but we're going to use this equation to help us find our A value or our A squared value. Okay? Alright, so we need to find the center. A radical showed up. If a radical shows up, it's going to help us find the center. Okay? So look what we think. We think that the center should be where? At 5, negative 2. Just cover up the radical portion. Because this is the distance from the center to a focus. Okay? Wherever it may be. It could be up or down. But this is the distance. This is your C value. And that would be the distance you would travel from the center to a focus. So that my center is going to be 5, negative 2. Again, radicals are your friend. So we start our equation. We're going to say that x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 1. Okay? So co-vertices. Check this out. Because the, the foci may mess with you a little bit, but the co-vertices is the b value, which is b squared. Okay? What is changing? Well, the negative 2s are staying the same. The x's are changing. That means my b will go underneath the x. Do you understand? My b will go underneath my x. That means the a will go underneath my y. Or you can remember that the foci are always located on the major axis. And since we're changing the y value, then we know that it's going to be underneath the y. Okay? So real quick, let's figure out what c squared is. We're going to use this equation at the top. We need to figure out what c squared is. So we're going to go times 4 square roots of 3. So 4 times 4 is 16. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is a 3. And when we multiply that together, we get 48. So when we square this, we know that c squared equals 48. There's our value, okay? This is 48, okay? Over here, we need to find b. All right, b is going to be the distance from the center. Here's my center. My center is at 5, negative 2. You have to determine how far it is from 9 to 5. And you're going to say, that's easy. 9 minus 5 is 4. So my B value is 4. So B squared equals 16. That is my B. My B squared is 16. So we're going to use this, and we're going to write this equation of A squared minus 16 equals 48. You see where we got those numbers from? We got the c squared from multiplying this c value. 
We got b squared for multiplying our b by for squaring it. And now we're going to solve this and we're going to say plus 16 plus 16 a squared equals 64. I don't need to take the square root. I want a squared. So look at what we have now. We have a squared is 64. We said we said that the b, the b was going to go underneath the x's because the x's are changing. b squared is 16. That makes this a squared. And we just said that a squared equals 64. There's your equation. Let's try another one. Okay. They give us the foci and the endpoints of the major axis. What's another name for the endpoints of the major axis? Let's go back and check our notes. The vertices are the same thing as the endpoints of the major axis. And we said that vertices will give us the A value. The endpoints of the major axis will give us our A value. So let's go back to our problem. So this is the same thing as our vertices. And so this is going to be our A value. The foci. This is going to be our C value. Foci is C value. Because co-vertices, that's, that's our B value. So that means if they, we, we don't have B, we have C and we have A, we're still going to use this equation of A squared minus B squared equals C squared. We're going to have to use that equation. We're going to have to solve for B. Okay? All right. So, yay, we have a radical. This is my C value. And if you cover up or you take away your C value, that will leave you your center. The center of our ellipse is going to be 1, 7. There's your center. Now we can start our equation. X minus 1 squared plus Y minus 7 squared equals 1. We just have to figure out our a squared and our b squared. Okay? The vertices. This is going to take us, this is going to give us our a value. Okay? We need to find out how far our center is from one of these points. My center is 1, 7. So we have to determine how far it is from 17 to 7. Well, the distance or the time, I mean, the, the, the distance from 17 to 7 is going to be 10. So my A value equals 10. Okay? Now, what also is changing? My Y values are changing. So luckily, once again, my A is going to be underneath my Y. So we just picked the wrong problems because every time there's underneath the y. All right, so my a value is 10, so a squared will be 100. So what does that tell us? That means I can go up here, a squared, a squared is 100 minus b squared equals, I need to find out what c squared is, I need to multiply my c times itself. So we're going to go times 5 square roots of 3. 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is a 3. And when I multiply together, we're going to find out that c squared equals 75. c squared is 75. Okay? Now this one's a little bit different. All right? You have to be careful because of the negative sign. 
But what we're going to do, let's copy this down so we have some more room. 100 minus b squared equals 75. We're going to move this to the other side. We're going to go minus 100 minus 100. I get negative b squared equals negative 25. When I divide by negative 1, I get b squared equals a positive 25. There is my b squared. There is my equation. Okay? One more problem. The endpoints of the major axis. This looks like it could be tricky. But what are the endpoints of the major axis? See the note. Endpoints of the major axis, same thing as vertices. Endpoints of the minor axis, same thing as the covertices. What did we say? Vertices will give us the A value, the covertices will give us the B value. So when we go work our problem, The endpoints of the major axis, this is the same thing as our vertices. The endpoints of the minor axis are the same thing as the covertices. This is going to give us our A value. We're going to find our center, but this is going to give us our A value. This is going to give us our B value. So we need to find our center. Let's see, let's find our center real quick. Over here, what is staying the same? The negative fours are staying the same and they are in the Y position. Over here, the ones are staying the same. They're in the X position. So that's where we put the one there's the center of our equation. Now we're ready to start our answer. We're going to say x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 1. Okay? But we take these axes and we have to compare them to the center. Our center is at 1, negative 4. So you compare it here and you ask yourself, look at this, we're going to ask, how far is it from 10 to 1? That is 9. My A value, this is going to give me my A value, you're going to find out that A equals 9. But who is changing? In this time, the X values are changing. So my a goes, or my a squared goes underneath my x. a squared would be 9 times 9. 81 would go underneath the x. My midpoint, I mean, excuse me, the endpoints of my minor, this is going to give you my b value. We need to find out how far it is from negative 9 to negative 4. From negative 9 to negative 4, you're going to find out that b equals 5 units. And then when you square that, b squared is going to be 25. Got it? There are some examples. Sometimes we'll give you the a and the b. If we do not give you the a and the b, we're going to give you the foci, which is the c value. But the huge thing you need to remember is please don't panic if you see a radical. Radicals are your friends. They make your problems so much easier. Okay? Hey, do what you can. Practice. If you get stuck, just let us know and let us help you. Good luck.